Okay, everybody, welcome back to another live online learning webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so today for you guys, we are going to be looking at Sibelius uh, and creating musical worksheets. Uh, before we jump into that webinar, I do wanna go over a couple of points with all of you. Um, so first of all, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, you'll notice that your audio is muted. However, you are able to ask questions using the Q&A function down at the bottom of the screen. Um, or if you're watching us from a streaming service, if you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, please leave your questions in the comments. I will be looking for questions throughout the webinar. So please send us your best questions. Um, all of our recorded sessions will be posted to avid.com. Um, and then if you're in our Zoom call with us, you can also raise your hands to let us know you're out there. So today, as mentioned, uh, we are looking at Sibelius and leading this session is Martin Thompson. Martin is an avid master instructor with us. So he teaches you know, our Sibelius courses and delivers official certifications. Um, so Martin, it's all yours. You're welcome to take the screen sharing away. Superb, thank you very much, Lainey. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome to um, this session on creating worksheets. Um, for those of you who were with us uh, two weeks ago, when we were talking about um, using Sibelius as an interactive teaching tool, um, what we did there was we concentrated on everything other than how it um, sounded. Okay, oh, sorry, it was more about, sorry, I'll start that again. It was all about how it sounded. Um, this one here, we're more interested in how it looks, how Sibelius looks on the screen and the various different options that you have um, about to do with layout. Um, if I can just share my screen with you. So you can see what I'm looking at. There's Sibelius there. Um, that's what I'm gonna be starting with today. And what I'm hoping to finish with is, whoops. Give me one second. What I'm going to finish with is this worksheet example there. Okay, and if you have a quick look at this worksheet example, you see there's various um, features that you may not be aware of how to use very well. Or you may think that's just very straightforward and it's actually something that takes a bit more um, doing, if you like. Okay, let me go through it one at a time. First of all, you've got these notes here with no stems on them. It's just the, the, the notes. The idea there is, okay, these are the notes you can use and there's an empty space into which to write a melody that uses those notes. For example, if you're teaching composition, that might be a way you could use that, okay? So how do we do this? How do we get the gap in there? How do we get no bar lines, no rests in there? All that kind of thing. This line here has, um, this is a chord recognition exercise, very straightforward. The content of what we're doing today doesn't really matter. It's more about the execution of it, okay? And what we're looking at here are these gaps in between the spaces and between the, the, the bars, okay? And then we've got the scale sheet at the bottom. So you've got um, scales going up and down, arpeggios going up and down. Notice that we have a change of key signature here, but we don't have it here at the at the end of there. We've got different length bars, but we don't have those here, that type of thing. We've got um, different size margins per stave in there. And, and, and at the end, we've got a graphic down at the bottom as well, okay? All of these things I'm gonna be showing you over the next 30 minutes or so, how to complete. Um, and as I said, I'm gonna be starting from there, okay? Completely standard, bog standard, blank Sibelius file. Before I get into that in any detail though, I want to point out that if you go to the file tab and then go to teaching, you have the worksheet creator and there are over 1700 ready-made worksheets in here. So if you're happy to take something that someone else has created and adjust it to suit your own purposes, have a good look through here. Um, this wizard will take you through the 1700 worksheets and narrow, narrow it down I quickly go through it. So there's, you have 17 there. You've got your templates as well. So various different templates you want to use. One of which is a blank manuscript sheet. Okay, so if you do decide you want to have just a blank sheet of paper for pupils to write on or students to write on, you've got them in there. 
fact, if I click on next, you can see we can, we're going to narrow it down to materials for any size group, and we're going to be completing it in various different ways. I'm not going to change any of these. I'm just going to leave it at any just now, so you can see what we're looking at. So we're looking at elements of music. There are 463 worksheets in there to do with elements of music, 117 to do with writing and creating music, etc. Okay, and it's worth having a good look through here. Selected repertoire, if you just want to have some Beethoven or some Bach repertoire to play on the piano, help yourself, it's all there for you. Okay, if you go for writing and creating music, for example, hit on next. Rotation, there's 37 of those. Adapting, transposing, arranging, there's nine of those. Composing, there's 50 of those. Let's go for those. See how we go. Lots of different things. We're going to compose a melody, let's say. There's 19 of those. And we're going to compose from prompts. Eight of those, quite like the sound of those. Uh, let's go for from pictures. There's a summary, and at the end, do I want an answer sheet? Well, for this one, yeah, I don't, this one probably not, but I'll, I'll leave it there anyway so you can see what happens. Click on next. There's your student sheet, and there's your answer sheet. Okay, the answer sheet, if there were specific questions in a student sheet, they would be answered in the answer sheet, okay? But because this is a lot more um, student-led, then the answer sheet's very, very similar to the student sheet. I click on finish. I will create both of those. Well, there, imagine you're writing a melody that follows that basic line. Okay, and information there about the stimulus that you're looking at, what the differences here between these two lines and how could your music emphasize that, etc., etc. Okay. If I zoom out slightly for this, you'll see that there are no musical staves in this. It's just text and images, text and graphics. Okay. That's, however, a playback line. And if I press the space bar to, oops, if I press the space bar to play it, you will see that the playback line moves across. And that's because, and this is the first thing to remember when you're using Sibelius, that anything that you put into Sibelius has to attach to a stave or a, a bar, okay? How can we do this? Well, if I type the letter I to show you the instruments in this score, you will see that we have an unnamed treble staff with no lines, which is called hidden, okay? To get to that, if you want to create one of those yourself, if you go to the All Instruments category over here and scroll right down at the bottom to Others and open that up, you'll see up there, Unnamed Treble Staff, No Lines Hidden. Okay, so if you want to create something that doesn't have any notation in it at all, like this, that's how you can do it. These, incidentally, are just graphics that have been imported as well. I'll take you through that process just shortly. So keep in mind that you have the worksheet creator and there's a whole lot of things in there to have a look at before you decide to start and set about creating your own. However, if you do want to create your own, I'm going to take you through the techniques that you need. Okay, and that's where we're going to start with. So the first thing I had on the um, template one was a bar with just note heads on it. No notes, no stems, just note heads, okay? And that was very straightforward to do. I'm not going to be spending any time today talking about the mechanics of inputting notes, okay? Um, two weeks from now, we're doing another Sibelius session where we'll focus completely on that. So you may want to have a, put that one in your diary as well. I'm sure Lenny can remind you of the, the timing at, at the end of the session for that, okay? But I want to put some notes in here. So select the bar, N for note input. And I'm going to select quavers. All I'm going to do is just put in a line of quavers like so. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. But what I can then do is select that bar, go to the notations tab, and you get an option here to change the note head type. And if I change the note head type here, one of the options in there, there are lots and lots of different options, incidentally, lots of them. But the one I'm going to change it to a stemless Simple as that. And all that does is make these notes stemless and they will play back, but obviously 
we're more interested in what it looks like on this on the screen. Okay, I'll show you towards the end how you can turn the playback line off, incidentally, as well. Okay, so that's fine, but now what I need to do is to make a space over here for the students to write their music in using a pen. Okay, as with anything in Sibelius, there are lots of different ways to do most things. Okay, for this first one, the way I would suggest you do it is make a selection, select from there to there, let's say, and hide everything that's in there. Okay. What the other option may be is just to select this bar line here and put everything from there on a new line. But look what that does to the first bar. It stretches it out and trying to fix that is an absolute nightmare. So undo that. Your better bet is to get this bar looking the way you like it and then adjust everything else around there. Okay. So that's why I would suggest selecting from there to there and hiding them. And I'll show you how to do that in a wee second. But Another option, and it's one that I use quite a lot when I'm creating worksheets, is how you make selections. You could click and shift click here to extend that selection, but a much, sometimes a much more efficient way is to, what some people call rubber band it. So you're going to drag a selection box around it, the same as you would do in Word or in a graphics program. And to do that, you can't just click and drag because that will move the page around. So you hold down the shift key and then click and drag and that drags a selection box like so, okay? Now once you've made your selection, first thing I'm gonna do is hide all the bar lines. So I would go to my notations tab again. There's a bar line option up here. Bring that down and I've got an invisible option. So I'm gonna make those bar lines invisible like so. You can still see them, but that's because on the view tab, hidden objects is turned on. I'm going to leave that turned on just now, just for clarity, but at the end, we'll turn them off. Okay, to make a gap before this, if you remember in the, the demo file, there was a space in here, okay? And to do that, I select, that again, there's two ways you can do it. The way I tend to do it is select this bar after where I want the gap to appear. Go to the home tab and open up the inspector. The inspector will give you the properties of whatever is selected. Okay, in this particular case, it's that bar. And everything to do with that bar, the properties are shown over here. The one I'm interested in is this down, down here, the gap before the bar. I'm going to turn that. I like to make that seven. I'll make it seven spaces. Now, a space is a distance between two of the lines in the stave. That's one space. So I'm going to make this seven spaces. And I get a new clef and I get a space there, but that bar stays a similar shape to where it was. And now all I need to do is to select the rest of these rests to delete them. Again, I could select them individually and hit delete, or I could rubber band it, like so. And I could delete them, or I could go up to the Home tab and go to Hide or Show and just hide them. Actually, it has the same effect. Whenever you delete a rest, what you do is hide it. Okay, and that's the first line done. If I now go to view hidden objects, that's what we'll print. Not the, the green playback line, but that there. The hidden objects option to see them, just so you can see how things are done and you can maybe adjust the, the layout to suit particular things, okay? Now, one thing is good practice to do as well is to select this final bar line here and tap the enter key. And what that will do is put what we call a system break in there. Okay, so it means that everything after there goes onto a new line. Okay, and you can see what's happened here. A couple of these bar lines have become invisible. So that's my fault. So I'm just going to select from there to there. Go back to bar lines, notations, bar lines, normal. So they turn back on. Okay. So that's fairly straightforward once you know about the option of hiding bar lines and so on. What I'm going to do next, though, is we're going to have a chord recognition um, exercise on this line here. So what I'm going to do, select the first bar here. I'm going to select a semi-brief. 
and I'm going to play a chord on the keyboard of D minor. Simple as that. The next chord is going to be whatever I like, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Just play some chords like so. Okay. I want that to be the only contents of this line. So again, same as I did up here, select the bar line, hit the enter key, everything after there goes on to a new line. But I want these now to have gaps before them. Exact same as I did up there. Now I could do the exact same thing. Select the bar, go to the home tab, go to the inspector and make it gap before bar. But the other way you can do it is to select the bar line where you want the gap to appear. Go to the layout tab and put a split system in here. And what a split system will do is basically what putting a gap before the bar will do. It makes a gap in there and there's a symbol for a split system. And it's very easy to quickly go through these bars doing that like so. Now the thing is I want all of these to be on a single line now. So what I can do now is select them all. And again, on the layout tab, I can make into a system. And that will put them all on a single line, which we call a system, with an equal sized gap between them all. So the layout looks nice and normal. Don't worry about all these layout marks. Again, you can turn those off from the view tab. And they don't print anyway, so don't worry about that. But they're there. And like you can see how that looks. Okay, It looks nice and neat and tidy. I want to put a line underneath here for the students to write the name of the chord in there. Now you may think, well, we'll do that as text, as lyrics, okay? And if you could, if I do Control L, Command L for lyrics and then do a line, uh, that doesn't work because it's moving on to the next note to put lyrics in there. So I have to go back here. Maybe I can do an, under, uh, uh, an underscore. Ah, let's try that. That must not work either because if I zoom in there, what we've actually got are lots of slurs, lots of ties. So that doesn't work for me either. So what you want to do, with that selected, type the letter Z, no, beg your pardon, type the letter L for lines, or you could go to the Notations tab and there's your lines gallery. Either way, it does the same thing, opens that up. And there are lots of different types of lines in here. Okay, and I mean lots and lots and lots of them. So to narrow that down, if you go to all, you can change this to just show you lines. And the first one there is a straightforward line. And it's there. And you can then adjust that to suit. You can then copy and paste that around. So I want to take that one, hold down the Alt key. This is a, a very cool trick. If you hold down the Alt key, that will instantly copy and paste it to wherever you put it. So I'm going to put that, whoops, there, select it, copy it, put it like so. Okay, it doesn't take very long at all to do that. Now, you may have problems trying to line these up with each other, but that's okay because, again, if you drag select them, like so, so only the lines are selected. If you go to the... I always forget where this one is. I think it's on the home tab. No, it's not. <laughs> where did I put this? Oh, that's embarrassing. I can't remember where this is. Oh, there it's there. It was, it was an appearance tab. That's where I went in the first place. You can align these. Okay, with these, these objects selected, you can align them in a row so they all appear in a straight line with each other. Okay, so very quickly, our worksheet's starting to take shape. And it doesn't take long at all to very quickly make something which is bespoke to you, okay? The rest of the demo file is a scale sheet. So I'm very quickly going to talk about the options for creating a scale sheet. And again, there are lots of different ways to do this. The way I like to do it is to have all the notes as um, semi-briefs, uh, four-beat notes. Um, 
and you have a scale and an arpeggio, okay? So the first thing I need to do is to select um, the time signature for my scale. Now, if you think about a scale one octave going up and down, that's 15 notes. So I'm going to make a time signature of 15 one, which will be 15 whole notes in the bar, okay? So you would think I would go to my time signature, so T for time signature, and there isn't one there that I could type it in here. But the problem if I do that, I'll just do it. Okay, the problem then is that would, that would cause an issue to appear here. It would cause what we call a cautionary um, time signature to appear. So the way to do it, the way to get around that is to go to your time signature again, but don't use any of these. Go to more options at the bottom. And that brings up what we call the legacy time signature dialog. And this is where you have much more control because if I go to 17, sorry, 15, one here, but don't allow the cautionary. Just to show you what I mean, I'll allow the cautionary just now. That's the default. I click OK. And when I put it there, I get this. I don't want that. That's just messy. So I'm going to control Z to undo. Start that again. Time signature, more options, 15, one, but don't allow the cautionary. Put it there, doesn't appear here. Perfect. So I want a new key signature as well. So I'm gonna go for K for key signature. And the same issue would, would appear if I just put a key signature in here using this. So again, more options at the bottom. Brings up the legacy key signature dialogue. I'm gonna go for E flat major, but this time I'm gonna make sure that I hide it. Now the default for here is for it not to be hidden. So I have to make a point of making sure that's ticked. Click OK, tell it where I want it to appear. And I don't see it, it's, it's shown in gray, so it won't print, that's fine. I can now put my notes in quite happily. Using my MIDI keyboard. Now the next bar is going to be an arpeggio, which has got seven notes in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, go to my key signature. No, go to my time signature, I beg your pardon. Always get those two mixed up. Change that to 7 1. Don't allow the cautionary. Put it there. Cautionary doesn't appear. Put the notes in. Perfect. Don't worry about these. Don't worry about these. I will remove those just shortly. Okay. So that is going to be the end of this line. So I can now select that bar line, hit the enter key. When I say the enter key incident, I mean the enter key next to your letters on the QWERTY keyboard, not the one on the numeric keypad. You do different things in Sibelius, okay? So the one next to the letters, I'll take a new line, and I can then repeat the procedure now for the next key. So I'm gonna start with a new key signature, K for key signature. This one is going to be F major. So I'll go to more options, F major, and hide it. Put it there, so it's hidden there, perfect. Key or time signature. More options, back to 15 one. Don't allow the cautionary. Perfect. And away I go. Next bar. Now, one feature in Sibelius that you may not be aware of is that time signatures and key signatures and various things, things like clefts and so on as well, are what we call restorative, which means that you can select a bar, make a change, and it will restore itself back to its previous state after that. Problem with that is you're then giving control over how this time signature appears, which means it won't be hidden at the end of the previous line. So for, if you're doing a scale sheet, don't use that feature. I would put them all in manually. Okay, it doesn't take long. So the last one is going to be in G major. So on your key signature, um, more options, G major, hide it. Okay, put it there, hides it from there, perfect. Time signature, back, to, oh, I haven't done the arpeggio, I beg your pardon. I do beg your pardon, I'm gonna control Z that. I haven't done my arpeggio yet. Time signature, seven, one. For the arpeggio, don't allow the cautionary. There we go, I'm in F major. Take a new line. Now we'll do the, key, the G major one. So, key signature. More options, G major, hide it. 
And I'll take you through this because I want you to see how quickly it actually happens once you're comfortable with it. Okay, because it looks like I'm doing quite a lot, but I'm actually just doing it fairly quickly and it doesn't take long to do. So I don't know why I'll the cautionary. 15-1, G major, go. And the arpeggio, um, time signature, more options, 7-1, don't know the cautionary. There, arpeggio. Okay, that's the end of the notes for this sheet. So I can get rid of all the extra empty bars and I can do that by clicking here, scrolling to the end and shift click like so. So I'm just extending the selection, but then control or command delete. Okay, on a PC, you can do control delete or backspace, both do the same thing. On a Mac, it's command backspace. And that will turn the, the bars purple which means they're not going to just empty the bars. We're going to remove the bars altogether. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Okay. I can now take these two bars, go to my layout tab and make them into a system, same as I did up at the top. And these two make into a system. And these two make into a system. Perfect. I can now select all the, well, first of all, I'll do it one at a time. If I select that first time signature and press delete, you want to rewrite the rest of them? No, I don't. I just want you to just get rid of that time signature altogether. Don't make any other changes, just remove that time signature. I can do that for all of them. And again, it doesn't take long to do that. I've never actually tested if you can delete all of these at the same time by selecting them all simultaneously. Must try that sometime. Guess what? I'm going to put a gap before these bars so I can just do the split system. Oops, select a bar line. Always do that one. Split system. Split system. Split system. You may notice as well that in the other sheet I had final bar lines, like this final bar line here. I want that to appear on all of these. Well, I can select all these bar lines individually. So if I hold down the command key, select the first one, hold down control or command, and then select the rest of them. Just be careful to select just the bar lines. I can then go to notations, bar line, final. Oh, select a single bar line. Sure, you could do that. The other option you have instead of using the notations tab is to right click on a blank part of the page to bring up what we call the legacy dialog, legacy create menu, and select your bar line from there. Like so, two seconds, final. Bar line final, and the last one, bar line final. Okay. I want to put a gap before here to put some text in there so I can scroll in. See if you imagine there was a bar line there just before this cleft. If I click on there, the bar line appears, and that black, that purple square is a handle that I can then use to drag that in. I can make it silly if I like, but I'm just going to pick, I'll put in a little bit from there. I'm going to do the same down here as well. But for this one here, I want this space to appear afterwards. Now, if I just select the bar line and drag it left or right, odd things happen. So that's not what you do. If you want to make a space at the end, you click one space. Remember, that's a space between the two lines. One space after the end of that. Click there and drag it back. You can then just put some box text in here to see what the, 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 the scales are, etc. Okay. You wouldn't want the bar numbers, I wouldn't suggest for a, a, a scale sheet or a worksheet. So if you do Control or Command E, sorry, Control Shift E or Command Shift E, will open up the engraving rules. And if you go to the bar numbers, you have the option to turn them off from there. You have various other options in here, but for today, we're looking at no, none of them at all, so you can turn them off. That's all fine. The last thing that was on the, tech, the other sheet was a graphic down here. So to make a graphic, you go to your notations tab and you've got a graphics option over here. Click on the graphic 
but I'll ask you what graphic you want to bring in. School crest. Tell it where you want it to appear. Sibelius can accept various different types of graphic, um, various different file formats. So it's worth keeping that in mind. Okay. And that's a scale sheet now. You can see I've still got all the layout marks and hidden things turned on. So I want to go up to the view objects, sorry, view tab, and turn off hidden objects, layout marks, and I'm going to turn off the playback line as well. And that is how your sheet would print. Okay. And those are the techniques involved, basically, in creating worksheets or anything that's not your straightforward standard musical score. If you want to do a specific um, things like to do, to do with the layout of, of your music on a, on a page. Those are the various techniques involved. You can select a bar line and make it a final bar line at any point. You can make a gap in the middle of a bar, middle of a stave. Um, you can adjust the width of that gap using the properties. Um, you can change a bar, the, the clefs and the key signatures and the time signatures without having the cautionaries. It's just knowing to go for the legacy versions of the dialogues, okay? If you just use the normal dialogues, like for time signature, use this one, you can't, there's no option there to turn off the cautionary. You only get that if you go to the more options and you get that option there. Okay, see I've started talking two minutes ago and suddenly half an hour's gone by. So there's quite a lot of information in there. I hope you, um, you gain something from that. So I hope it's something that you find useful. Um, certainly I get a lot of people asking me, teachers come up to me and say, I want to create a simple scale sheet. Why is it so difficult? Because a simple scale sheet isn't actually that simple to do. Think of a, a blank manuscript page and compare it to a new Sibelius file. You've got your clefts you need rid of, you've got your bar lines you need rid of, and you've got your rest you need rid of as well, while keeping all the staves and everything in the right place. So you've got to try and make sure you know how to make these things happen if you're going to have the option to create beautiful bespoke worksheets. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Um, I'm going to hand back to Lainey if there's any questions. We're going to have a couple of minutes if there's any Q&A at the end. I'm happy to answer anything I can. Lainey? Yes, let's see. Um, great, so now would be the time if anybody has questions to submit some questions. Um, while we're, while I'm giving everybody a couple seconds to submit any questions, um, Martin, um, I wanted to ask if the page background prints. Good question. No, it doesn't. Um, you may or may not be aware, if you go to the preferences. You might want to uh, take the screen, screen sharing back. Screen sharing again, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Yes. I didn't realize you'd taken it from me there. There we go. Yeah, if you go to preferences, which is control or command comma, that will open up the preferences. Under um, textures, you can adjust the background paper color or graphic, basically. Um, the paper fine white, white fate, paper white fine laid is the default one. Um, you can just change it to just be a color and you can make that white. A lot of people change it to things like there's a coffee stained one, which a lot of people seem to like as well. Where is it? There it's there. Which looks like that. That does not print. That's purely for the fun of it. I think somebody in Sibelius just had a, a sense of humor one day and decided to have that as an option. But if you go to print anything, control command P, you do have the option down here to print in color. So if you want your school crest to appear in color, you can print that in color. But the page backgrounds, as you see from the, the thumbnail there, the page background does not print, just it becomes white. Awesome. Um, we have a question from Allison. Uh, she missed when you demonstrated how to take the beams out. Okay. Um, she's just asking if you could quickly go back over that. No problem at all. Um, if I just take this first bar here. What I would do normally, I just put in some normal notes. Oops, too many. Let's make that first one down there. Okay, so put them in as normal, then select them, go to your notations tab, 
And under note heads, one of the options in there is to have stemless note heads there. Okay. If you want to use a shortcut, Alt Shift 8 will do it, which should be what command option, no, command shift, no, option shift 8 on a Mac. And that just makes them stemless. Very straightforward, single click to do. One other thing about note heads that might be worth pointing out as well, if um, you had, let me very quickly turn back on hidden objects, I am aware of the time. Let's say, for example, in here, I made a lot of notes like B, for example, okay? I can turn those using the same process um, into slashes with or without the rhythm stems. But if I do it like so, they don't play back. See, they were all the letter B, the note B, so they appear in the middle of the stave, but they don't play back which is very handy if you're going to write using chord symbols or whatever, and you maybe want people to improvise over the top of it, you can use that type of thing as well. But the note heads are quite powerful and it's worth having a wee play with them, but that's how you can use stemless, stemless ones there. Awesome. Great. Well, I think that about covers it for now. Um, so I'm going to steal screen sharing back from you one last time. I'm just going to go over okay. our next, our next sessions. Um, so we are we do have a session tomorrow, Thursday, and then next week we have three sessions as well. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go over those. Uh, so tomorrow we're looking at Maestro Designer. Uh, Thursday we're looking at Media Composer. And then next Tuesday we're looking at Pro Tools. So if any of these interest you, we'd love to have you stop by. Um, you can register on our website or you can just join us via Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, one of those streaming platforms. Um, I just wanted to thank Martin. Thank you so much for joining us, for leading the session. Really no appreciate thank it. You very much. Um, and if we have any lingering questions, I'll I'll direct them to you. Please do. Please do. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Martin. Thanks, Anne.